All right, so last time we answered the question of whether a reaction was going to be spontaneous or not. And basically what we said is that the entropy of the universe is always increasing for a spontaneous reaction. So if the entropy of the universe increases, it's spontaneous. If it does not, it uh, is non-spontaneous, right? So if your positive value, spontaneous, negative value, non-spontaneous. So remember again that delta S is kind of a measure of how um, dispersed energy and matter is, how random it is. Let's see, measure of energy slash matter dispersion. Cool. All right, so naturally then we want to know how to find the delta S of the universe, right? And so it turns out that's actually kind of hard to do right think about measuring all the entropy of the universe i mean that's that's pretty difficult when you're talking about it um however we can get close right if you're talking about a system and you're talking about that system's kind of surroundings it's really only about the immediate surroundings that are going to change so uh we're just going to go ahead kind of just approximate and we're going to say that the delta s of the universe is essentially approximately equal to the delta s of the surroundings right it's good enough um things far away from the system aren't going to change too much. So they're going to be approximately the same. And so this, of course, is going to equal to um, the heat for the surroundings over the temperature of the surroundings, right? How much heat is being dispersed in this thing right here? And we know that the Q of a system is essentially equal to the delta H of the system. And so we know that the Q of a surrounding is equal and opposite to that of its system, right? So if a system loses heat, the surroundings gain heat. And so this must also be true, right? So we can say the delta S or the Q of the surroundings is equal to the negative enthalpy of the system. So we can say delta S of surroundings is equal negative delta H of the system over the temperature of the surroundings. Cool. And so we can ask ourselves certain questions about are processes spontaneous or not based on what sign we end up here. Is delta S of surroundings, which is kind of our delta S of our universe, positive or negative? And so if we think about what's going on here, what we're thinking about is we have a solid here, ice, melting down into a puddle of water, right? So our question here is, will this occur? Will this water or this ice melt into water? So again, our question is, will this ice melt to liquid? Um, and so we can pull some data from, from some kind of tables. We can find the enthalpy of this reaction, right? which is going to be equal to our enthalpy of our system. And so this is 6.02 kilojoules. Right? And that makes sense. It's endothermic reaction. We're going from a solid to a liquid. That's an endothermic change. It needs to absorb energy. And then you can also look up the delta S of this reaction. Um, and you'll get 22.1 kilojoules per Kelvin. So again, that makes sense as well as because we're increasing the entropy when we go from a solid to a liquid. And although these units don't state it, they, generally these values are per mole. It just won't be stated for enthalpy or entropy. Um, they just kind of assume that you know you're talking about per mole of reaction here. So in this case, it is just per mole of water. And so the question, will it melt? Well, it depends, you know, kind of what you're talking about. We see that our delta S of surroundings here is temperature dependent. There's a temperature there. So it depends. So let's take a look at two examples at negative 10.0 degrees Celsius and at 10.0 degrees Celsius, right? Logically, you should just be able to figure it out yourself. Um, ice melts at zero degrees Celsius. So at negative 10, it shouldn't. And at 10, it should. Let's see if we get that. So again, delta S here of our universe is our delta S of our system plus our delta S of our surroundings, of our surroundings. 
and we've got this delta s of surroundings so we can go ahead and just plug that straight into there so then we'll switch this out for negative delta h of the system over temperature of the surroundings Cool, cool, cool. And so now we see that we have this delta S right here. This is the delta S of the reaction or of the system. So we can plug that straight into there. And then we also have the delta H of the system, which is right over here. So we can go ahead and plug that number into there. And then for our temperatures, we can plug in whichever temperature we're talking about. So in one case, we'll plug in negative 10. In the other case, we will plug in 10. Uh, well, not 10. We'll see what it'll be in a minute here. So let's go ahead and split this up into two. Again, we'll do 10.0 degrees Celsius, negative 10 here, positive 10.0 degrees Celsius. So I'll start off here on this left-hand side, right? We have to first convert negative 10 degrees Celsius to Kelvin, right? This temperature right here of the surrounding must be in Kelvin. So if we think about that, this should go to 263 Kelvin, right? It's degrees Celsius equals, oops, Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273.15 K. Cool. So that'll go 263 K. So we're gonna plug the numbers in here. So we'll get 22.1 joules per K for the Delta S of the system plus here this negative 6.02 kilojoules over top of 263.15 Kelvin. Go ahead, do a little bit of extra math. So this right here will be negative 0 0.02288 kilojoules per Kelvin. So here's something that you just really got to be careful about. Often entropy is given in joules, whereas enthalpy is given in kilojoules. So you got to make sure they're in the, the same unit. So what I'm going to do is I multiply this right side by a thousand to turn it into joules. Right, this then becomes 22.88. Joules per Kelvin, right? Minus this, right? So the delta S of the universe ends up being a negative 0 0.8 joules per Kelvin, right? So if the delta S of the universe is negative, that means that it's non spontaneous. So this reaction would not be spontaneous. So that makes sense. Ice will not melt into water at negative 10 degrees Celsius. So logically, that makes sense. On this other side, we're gonna kind of go through the same routine here. This delta S of the universe is this 22.1 um, joules per Kelvin plus the 6.02 kilojoules, negative kilojoules divided by now 283 Kelvin, right? So we have to convert this to Kelvin. Follow the math all down and you'll get the delta S of the universe here is equal to plus 0 0.8 joules per Kelvin. So this process is spontaneous. Again, ice will spontaneously melt into water at 10 degrees Celsius. So the end result, again, if something is spontaneous, it needs to have a positive delta S of the universe. The entropy of the universe must be positive, must be ever increasing. So this is non-spawn, and this guy is spontaneous.